Oh, welcome. I promised you last time that we'll continue with uh, the way to prosperity, our pathway to prosperity, because uh, as uh, lesson number two, and today we are here again. And I'd like us to, to go to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. The Bible talks about there's this one of the way, if you want to know that God is, uh, you are able to prosper, is when your life is yielded to God to an extent that you have a clear rhema word from God. Rhema word is a specific word that determines the status of your life wherever you go. Even if they draw you to any place or you go to any place, it is the word that determines who you are, determines your status, determines favor. That's very important. And I've come to discover, if you don't defile yourself, if you don't mix yourself with uh, evil people, is, is there's a likelihood uh, to enter into prosperity. Just as the Bible says in Psalms, uh, Psalms chapter 1, uh, I, I normally call that is like social sanctification. Yeah? When the Bible says, uh, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor starts in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers, or whatever he does shall prosper. You see now, this talks about a, a lifestyle that you end up in prosperity. In your life, there's no counsel of ungodly. In my, our lives, We've never, never stood in the path of sinners. We don't appear there. In our lives, we never sit in the seat of scornful. I have known this. I remember one brother who, used to, who prospered so much. And that brother would not entertain, entertain loose talk. He would not entertain loose life. He would not entertain backbiting, people who just sit around idling and then doing nothing. He was a man that was so serious with God. Actually, he would invite bishop. Bishop, come and bless my work. Pastor, lay hands on my business. And he was a giver. He could give so much to the house of God. He could support missions and the man prospered. But one day I noticed the people around him were the people we call ungodly. You will notice that ungodly man is seated in his business. That ungodly person. Uh -huh. And he was tired with evil people. He never meet God now with brothers who are really saved. And also would just sit around with scornful. And I said, brother, you are now stepping out of prosperity. And the business, business pros, fell drastically to an extent that he could even afford food to buy food. Couldn't even afford to raise funds for the children. Would gather around, do a fundraising to educate his children. Yes, you need to know how do you avoid the counsel of the ungodly? How do you avoid studying in the path of sinners? How do you avoid sitting in the seat of scornful? And then your mind delights in the law of God. There's this issue whereby you cleave towards over. God, I want to know your will. And because of that, you read the word of God devotionally as food. 
You read one chapter. You want to read another one. You want you make some notes. The Holy Ghost make, leads you to understanding. The word becomes so real, so lifeless, so powerful, so effective. Until now you are able to use the word of God prophetically. The Bible says you bring forth two things. Three things or four things happen to such a person. One, you shall be like a tree planted by the levers of water. The one of the unique characteristics of the tree, it brings forth its fruit in its season. Any person who is living this world, you have your season. And you are supposed to bring fruit in your season. You, you will not bring fruit in somebody else's season. You will bring fruit in your season. You are supposed to do that. Yeah? And Bible says, the leaf shall not wither. Oh, your establishment, your life ever is lively. Ever lively. Ever renewed. And when now you do things, whatever you do, it prospers. This is a yardstick of prosperity. I say there's a biblical, godly yardstick of prosperity. I would advise you to read and understand and get revelation of the real meaning of Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 and to 3. That's very important. Look, another way is this, is what we see now in Genesis 37. There's this, uh, there's, there's this man, a friend of ours, young man in the house of Jacob, Joseph. Bible says the prosperity of Joseph was determined by the influence of God. God came in and brought a standard. God came in and brought a level of life. He, the Bible says in verse 5, and now Joseph had a dream. And he shared, he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream, which I have dreamt. Verse 7 says, there, there we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose, and also stood Upright, I like this. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And then his brother said to them, to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? And your dominion is right to rule over. That's the meaning. So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Verse 9 says, then he dreams to another. I have come to discover whenever God brings his dream in your life, in most cases, not all, most cases, he can bring it again, but in a more clear way. Actually, it, it has three steps. The first one is the dream. It's like God is saying this, who you are. The second part, this is what I mean. That, that part now this what you should become out of that dream. The first one, receive the dream. This is who you are. The second part of the dream, this is the, uh, the real understanding of the dream. Understand it. And that's why when God appeared, when the age of the Lord appeared to, to Daniel, if you read Daniel chapter 10, there's a place the angel says, I have come to give you understanding. Already Daniel had a dream, but the angel came again to give Daniel understanding of what he had seen a dream. And therefore now, when, when you check the second part of the dream, that is verse 9, then he dreamt still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamt another dream, and this time the sun the moon and the eleven stars bore down to me. This time now is not now, it's more clearer. Sun and moon are 
talks about the father and the mother. The 12 stars, 11 stars are the brothers. And his brothers envied him. But his father kept the matter in his mind. This, this is unique. When brothers envied Joseph, the father had some, had some sensitivity. Jacob knew God. Jacob knew God can speak through dreams. And Jacob kept the words in his heart, in the matter in his mind. And you know how they, they argued, wanted to kill Joseph, get lead of him. Actually, they wanted to get lead. They wanted to terminate him, get a method to silence him. They proposed death. They proposed throwing him away somewhere to die alone. And finally, there's this issue where now, if you go to verse 18, they conspired against him to kill him. That's very interesting. But verse 22, his brother Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit, which is the wilderness, and do not lay hand, that he might, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to the father. And uh, that is okay. If you go down, 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 verse 26, so Judah, verse 25, and they sat down to eat a meal, and they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming out of Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm, marrow, on their way to carry them down to Egypt. And so Judah said to his brothers, what profit is there if we kill our brother and consume his blood? Come, let us sell him to Ishmael, and let not our heart be put upon him, for he is our brother. Of course, he was sold. And this is what happened now. And, and, and eventually now, these people went with him to, to, to Egypt. If you go to chapter 39, the Bible says, and Joseph was taken down to Egypt. And Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from Ishmaelites, who had taken him down there. Now, look at this issue. The first part of Joseph's life is God's influence, God releasing his mind. His Rema word on Joseph. You will be a person who one day you have 11 brothers and your mother and dad will bow to. You are not a simple person. That is the Rema word. That's what will determine your life. But you remember now, men of this world are funny because they never ask God, what kind of favor is this? Could God be raising this young man to help us in the future? There was no godliness. Actually, they sold him to be opposite of what God had said. They sold him to be a slave. Where God is saying they will bow to him, they sold him away to be a slave. But when he was taken to Egypt, Potiphar bought. It's interesting when you, when you, you are the go a series undergo such uh, uh, such uh, steps in life whereby your people are selling you and the one who bought you also sells you again to be a slave. But the Bible says when he was taken to Potiphar's house one thing, hallelujah the dream started working. When they took Joseph to Potiphar's house, where he was supposed actually to become a slave. That's the place where you are supposed to be a slave. Can you become a slave there? Hallelujah. But God comes out and says, no, no, this man bears word that says he is supposed to be adored. He is supposed to 
other people you depend on him he is supposed to be elevated he had kingship favor kingship leadership anointing not just becoming a leader he has prosperity leadership as a leadership with prosperity because people cannot just come around you because you are a leader but it's because you are a leader endowed with gifts a leader endowed with knowledge a leader with endowed with prosperity you can supply you can bless you can exercise authority and joseph had been chosen by god not in consultation to any family line not in consultation to any personality trait it emanated from god as the source and not dependent on anyone god is independent and whenever he brings his thought there's power enough to mold your personality and you fit in sometimes when god comes out and you know like now when god called moses Moses so I was like what we call melancholy people who are perfectionist and they don't present themselves as leaders but they can lead not those who campaign aloud majority of the leaders are not those who present themselves they are those that God raises because he knows them did you get that they are leaders who present themselves but they are leaders who God raises and approves because he knows them and he has raised them for that leadership leadership is not just sitting on the top leadership is ability to influence others so that they can follow and become that's very very important and now in in um, in Genesis 39 verse 2 now the word of god the dream of god start working where Joseph is supposed to remain a slave, a slave, perform like a slave, think like a slave, submit like a slave, the dream cannot allow. The dream is that you, the world, the resources will bow to you. Hey, hallelujah, it's powerful. Powerful. If you check the first part of the dream, when they talk of the sheaves, the wheat sheaves, those are resources. He sources you bow to you. It, also, it, 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 it may imply people, but in the depth it means person endowed with the blessing to bless others. And when we were sold to be a slave, right away there was manifestation. I always tell people, please, whatever God has spoken about you, please keep two things. Keep the dream and the dream giver. I say keep the dream and the dream giver. You prosper. Keep the revelation and the giver of revelation. Some people have ran away with the dream and forgot the dream giver. Some people have ran away with the vision and they forgot the giver of the vision. I say what has brought down mighty men of God, mighty women of God, mighty leaders of the world, even politicians, is that they were endowed with the Godred dream, but they left behind the giver of the dream. Somebody climbs up to be the president, president of Kenya, Uganda, all over, and they forget the giver of the dream. Let me say this, whether people like it or not, whoever gets to leadership and worship other gods, adores other God. You get to leadership to satisfy your cravings. Yes. There are people I've seen when they get there. I hate that. Because people are depending on you so much. You misuse girls. You misuse girls. You also, you also torture your wife, torture your husband. You ignore. You ignore the things of God. You can't to God just because you are a member of parliament, you can't bow to God just because you are a leader, you can't get down to the grass just because you are on the top. Please, I remind you now, you are there, God spoke about you. Keep the giver of the voice, and you never.
ever fail. They will try to bring you down. But the dream and the give of the dream will raise you again. They will try to put you into an area where you suffer. But the dream and the dream giver will command resources and command status in the new area. I said to you in the name of Jesus Christ, men and women who are watching now, no one lives in this world without a dream that God had for you. God gave for Joseph. Right now, as I speak, be open. I said be open. Because from today, oh, the God I serve, anybody who's watching me now, the God I serve, you put in your heart a dream. Something will be confirmed. It will trigger a direction. It will trigger a direction. It will trigger some potential. The way you wake up in the morning and you are so heavy, oh, I tell you that heaviness you melt. It has to give way to the dream. Yeah, you are a person who will bear fruits in your season. It is now. God must command all heaviness and obstacles. Can you now allow this man to bear fruit? Allow this youth to bear fruit in her season, in his season. I command it by the Holy Ghost. I command it by the word of God. Yes, yes, yes. Some of you are living under fear. You are fear of unknown. You fear some satanic forces. I now declare the blood of Christ cover you. I declare the Holy Ghost come upon you. I declare the anointing fall upon you now. I declare the mighty heart of God be upon you. For God possesses your life with a specific dream that must be attained. Look at that area where the dream is, started, is starting to operate. It's after they removed him. They, he was sold as a slave. And so the as a slave and landed in slavery. When now slavery was to work, men can put you where your dream is not. People can take you direct opposite to what God said in your dream. God knows you are a mighty man of God. But some people just put you down there. Don't struggle with men. Some readers in the church are struggling with the gifting. I remember... I remember one time uh, when I came to the church and um, when I was a young person, I just walked out all the, and God told me, I was, I was a Presbyterian, but one day God said, today I'll, I'll show you how to go. Uh, and God told me, can you turn to the right? I followed God. And I went to a church with a Monday structure. He said, Apostolic Faith Church. God said, this is why you read. I was just a teenager, but my trick adored the gift. I, I, at the age of 22, I had two churches. At the age of 26, I had opened seven churches. I tell you, it's not the matter of age, it's when the dream started working. I remember I met a lady who said, Bishop, do you know something? Do you know you are the person who led me to Christ in the church? As we met, in the street and I pointed at her and she fell down, cried and got saved. The dream is powerful. Most people the dream are misunderstood, especially when you are young. But one thing I have come to notice, if you have the dream of God, you always love people. You're never bitter. You are never bitter. Me, I suffered so much. People thought they have rejected me. I have never suffered rejection. People rejected me, but I never suffered rejection. I, I remember in the early, early stages of my calling, I was a teacher. I decided as a teacher. I was called in to work in a bank. I said, I can't work there. I've been called of God. I came to Nairobi. And the first preaching, I had five members. Preached. I had nowhere to sleep, nowhere to eat, nowhere to stay. And remember that Sunday, people said, Pastor, God bless you, good, goodbye. I was left sitting at the entrance of a hall in a Nairobi, not knowing where do I go. I never went back. But in my heart, the dream was speaking that even if I don't know what to eat and where to stay, the owner of the dream has way. I could suffer, I could walk kilometers, so many kilometers, without food, 
Remember one time I stayed for, I could stay for five days not eating, not because I'm fasting, but because there's no food around. It's not that I was poor in my heart, in my heart I had a dream. And I remember one, this old woman, who was my lord lady, who just said, Pastor, God has revealed to me, you've not eaten anything for five days. I know you're not fasting, come for food. And you supply food to me. And I said, I've never, I've never beat her because in my heart, I could see far. I could see the dream. I was so rich because of what was ahead of me. And that's why you shall prosper because of the dream. You know, if you don't have that, your life is already dictated by what is around, what is present. If people insult you, people mis mistreat you, you interpret your life from the circumstances around. I've never done that. No one has never made me to be what she or he decided. I've always been moving so fast. So fast. The other day I talked about 10,000 seater church. And I thank God most of you now are getting the vision. That's part of the vision that, that God gave me in 1982. And I tell you friends, in just Christ's name, oh God is so powerful. The owner of the dream. The owner of the dream. I remember the bank would ask me, Bishop, we can understand you. When, the, when there's no food, there's deficiency all over. Inflation is so high. You are so strong demanding that we must give you a loan, lend you a loan, and you, and you pay for this facility. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's above 3.2 3 or 3.4 million dollars. And I say, God gave way. A dream occupies your heart and your mind. And you are so much renewed and refreshed that the surroundings will not determine you but the dream and the gift of the dream. And that's why when the slavery was to start working, instead of slavery working, it's God who was seen. And that's why in Genesis chapter 39 verse 2, when he was taken by Potiphar and put in slavery circumstances, immediately something was observed. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. Can you hear this? He's a slave. Bible never calls him slave. Bible says the Lord was with him. And number two, he was not a successful slave. He was a successful man. I say right now, receive the touch of God. I say the Holy Ghost penetrates your heart and put in you a dream. For very soon, people will call you a name that will be a product of the dream. Oh my God, I worship you. The Lord was with Joseph. And number two, Verse 3, this master, Potiphar, who never knew Jehovah, threw the favor around Joseph, discovered the God of Joseph. And the Bible says, verse 3, and the master saw that Jehovah was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hands. This is the person sought to be a slave. But what is being now confirmed is not slavery, is the dream. I want to tell you and to speak to my heart that what should be confirmed is, what is not what exists around you, is the dream. Right now, I change you now from being poor. Be what God said about you. I break every yoke of darkness. I destroy curses. Receive the blood of Christ. Rise up and possess your dream. Be endowed with wisdom, capacity, emanating from what God has decreed about you. From today, you're not poor. You are not poor. You are what God said about you. Joseph, he was put in service, but instead of becoming a slave, the Bible says, the Lord was with him, and he was a successful man. Even the master noticed, Jehovah is with him, for whatever he did prospered. 
and he was entrusted with everything. And that's why the second part of prosperity, when you have God's dream, it is the influence of God, the influence of dream, and the dream giver. You become a product of that. God bless you. We will continue next time. God cover you.